Hello and welcome to this session on SOAP UI beginner tutorial. In this session we are going to get started with Groovy scripting and we will go very basic step by step and we will learn what is Groovy, how do we add Groovy scripts in SOAP UI, how can we do some very basic coding in Groovy and we will also look at some object oriented programming concepts using classes and objects. So this is going to be very easy and very interesting. Do not worry if you do not have any programming knowledge or you do not have any coding background. We are going to go very basic and in a step by step manner we will learn Groovy programming in SOAP UI. So let's get started and let me open my SOAP UI. So my SOAP UI is open and running now. I will just close this starter window and before I go into the project and create a script let us go to our browser and let me search for Groovy and here you will get some options if I go to the Wikipedia definition of Groovy programming language you can see Apache Groovy is a Java syntax compatible object oriented programming language for the Java platform. It is both a static and dynamic language with features similar to those of Python, Ruby, Perl and Smalltalk. It can be used as both a programming language and a scripting language. So Groovy is a language very much like Java. So if you know Java, Groovy is like very easy to learn. And even if you do not know any programming language or have any programming background, even then Groovy will be very easy to learn. And we will see exactly what all we need for our SOAP UI scripting. So here is our SOAP UI and this is the project that we have been working on in our earlier sessions, Country Info Service. So I will right click on the project and I will create a new test suite. And I can name it as test suite 3. Say OK. And here is our test suite. I will again do a right click on the test suite and create a new test case and I will say this is test case 1 and say ok. So we have our test case created here and inside the test case I can create a groovy step. So you can do a right click on any test case and go to add steps and here you will find an option for groovy script. So let us click here and you can name it anything I will say this is groovy script 1 and say ok and here is our editor for writing our groovy script you can notice that it says script is invoked with log context and test runner variables now these are the global variables in SOAP UI and they will be very useful and we will learn about them in more details but for now let us focus on our editor and here is our groovy script here you can start typing so one of the very first things you can do is you can say log.info and here inside quotes you can write anything so I say hello world and here is the run button you can see this is the run button click here and you can see the logs here it has printed hello world so let me give some more spaces here so it is very clear and run it again and you can see it prints here also in case you want to change the font or the size you can go to your preferences so you can go to preferences here and then inside editor settings you can select font and then change the font or change the size from here Now the other thing is here you can put everything inside brackets so whatever you want to print you can print you can put inside bracket and run it it is still running fine you can also put a semicolon at the end and run it and it is still running fine. The other very good thing in Groovy is uh, you do not have to follow a lot of very hard rules for example I say A equals 10 I say B equals 20 I say C equals A plus B and now I will print C so I say log.info so log.info is used for printing in Groovy and I just say here result is and to 
concatenate the result variable i say plus c and now i can run this and you can see it is printing the result is 30 so you can see i have not uh, defined whether a is an integer or a string i have not put a semicolon at the end still it is running fine however if you have if you do this in java it will require to uh, define whether a is an integer or a string or whatever it is and then you also have to give a semicolon at the end but you can do that in groovy as well i can say int a int p int c and also give a semicolon here and i can run it again and you can see it is printing and working fine now as well also if you go to the lock section you can do a right click and you can clear enable or disable you can also set max rows so in case you have a lot of locks to be printed in the console or the lock section you can increase the number of rows and also you can do a right click and say clear it will clear the locks now let us very quickly learn about comments so you can give a single line comments by giving a double forward slash which is same as in java so this is a single line comment and comments are very helpful wherever you want to add some extra information or add any description about whatever you are doing in the code and for multi line comment you can say forward slash star and enter and here you can put multi line comment okay also in groovy scripts in soap ui you can import any external functions or libraries same as in java you can say import at the top and whatever library or functions you want to import you can import like this now there are a set of external libraries already available within soap ui that you can import and in case you want to add something else which is not already included what you can do is you can go to your location of soap ui so in case you are on windows you can go to c and program files smart peer and inside soap ui folder you will find a folder by the name bin and inside bin you will find a folder by the name ext so if you put any jar file inside this folder and then restart your soap ui that will be available to be used inside groovy scripts inside soap ui and then you can import it and use its functions if you are doing some java coding and you create a jar file out of your program you can also put the jar file here in the ext folder and then use its function by importing it like this here this is something we will learn more deeply in the coming sessions now let us very quickly see these variables which are these three very important variables log context and test runner now these are the global variables in soap ui and these will be very useful while you are doing your scripting with groovy script so uh, this provides a lot of functions and these functions provide a lot of information about your current tests and your current project now if you are working with soap ui commercial version or the soap ui pro edition then if you say test runner dot it will use intellisense and code completion features and give you all the available methods however there is a workaround in the free version as well you can actually run this particular statement for getting the test runner methods so i will just copy it from here and i will provide all these notes in the description of this video so do not worry all these notes whatever is here will be available for you in the description uh, so let me just say here let me comment all this and let me just put this log dot info test runner dot meta class dot methods dot name dot unique dot sort so this is a statement that will give us all the available methods in test runner so if i run this you can see in the logs these are the methods available cancel equals fails get class get reason and so on get test case get test enable get time taken all this so these are all the methods available in test runner class so this is one of the workarounds by which you can see what are the methods available 
of course if you go to your browser and say test runner api docs and hit enter you will find this test runner api docs here and here you can see all the available methods and their use for test runner now do not worry as of now if you are not getting exactly what does this means and what does this do we will go and learn about this in the coming sessions but just for now remember these are the three global variables in soap ui that we will be using very frequently now also let us see how can we do some object oriented programming using classes and objects in groovy scripts in soap ui so i will do a right click on this test steps and add a new groovy step and i will name it as hello and say okay so this is our hello groovy script and i can actually create a class here so i can say class hello and a curly brace start and if i enter you can see the curly brace stops here and here whenever we create a class we have to define these three variables which is log context and test runner so this is the three variables that we have to define and then we also have to define a constructor so to define a constructor or to create a constructor you can say def and def is actually a short form for define and this you can use in in place of like int string so def is a general way of defining any variables so here i can create a constructor by saying def and the same name as of class name and here i will take in log context and test runner and here i will say this dot log when i say this dot log that means i am referring to the log variable which is present inside the class which is this one right and i say equals to log which is coming from here similarly i say this dot context equals to context and this dot test runner equals to test runner now do not worry if you are not getting exactly what i, I am doing here as of now uh, this will be more clear in the coming sessions but just for now i will tell you how exactly we create a class and call a class so this is how you will do it like this and then you can create any methods for example i say say hello and brackets curly braces and here i can just print anything log.info saying hello okay now if you run this there will be a failure which says fail to create script instance for class hello so for that what you have to do is at the end of every class or at the end of uh, this groovy script where we have created the class you will have to say context dot set property and here you can give any variable name so it's so basically you have to give the class name here as a variable and then initialize the constructor by saying new hello and we have log context and test runner so unless you do this your class cannot be instantiated and cannot be executed so if i run it now uh, no such property test runner so okay there is a problem here this should be double n and let me run it now and you can see now this is green so also you can uh, see this thing for example there was a mistake here and whenever there is an error and you run this you can see this will turn into red this will turn into red here as well as here okay so once i fix this and i run this you can see this has turned to green so now this is fine so our class is now ready now to call this class you can call it from anywhere so for example i create a step here itself a groovy step and say call hello and here first we have to get to the 
test step name which is this hello so you will say test runner dot test case dot get test step by name and the name of the test step is this hello so i will say this is hello and let us run it this is working fine and now you can store this into any variable so i say this is test step and then you have to say test step dot run test runner and context okay so this is what you will be saying here and run this until now this is fine and now we can use context dot the class name which is hello and now we can get access to any of the methods inside the class so our method was uh, here say hello so here we can say say hello and now if we run this you can say this is saying hello so whatever is there for example if we say say hello world and save this and go to call hello and run this you can see this is running the method from the class and giving us the output here also if you want to uh, give any inputs for example i take a input parameter as string and the variable name as name and here i say hello and whatever the name i have passed to this function now here when i go to the calling function i will pass a name so for example i say raghav here and run this and you can say this is returning hello raghav okay so this is how state forward it can be and here one thing you should notice is here we have the calling function and the class in the same test case so therefore we can just use this one single sentence to call the function just in case this is in a different test case for example uh, let me create a new test case here sorry let me go to test suite and create a new test case and i will say this is test suite, test case 2 and here inside the test case 2 i just put this call hello i will clone and test case 2 and yes so you can see now i have this call hello inside a separate test case or even if you have inside a separate test suite if you try to run it from here now you can see you are getting an error because it cannot get access to the test step hello so for that you have to first get access to the test step and for getting the access you can use these commands or statements so i will just put it here first so first you have to get to the project and also you can use all this in a single line just for easy understanding i have separated this so first i am getting access to the project by test runner dot test case dot test suite dot project and then i am getting access to the test case by using this project and then dot test suites so this is a uh, test suite 3 and the test case name is test case 1 so i'll put the test case name here and then i will get access to the test step so I, the name of the test step is hello so now i will get access to hello and then now here i can say hello dot run and i will run it now and i am getting this so all this i am going to put into the descriptions so this thing i will copy it from here and put in the notes here and then the hello class i will copy from here put in the notes and how to call from the same test case is this code and then how to call from a separate 
test case or a test suite is this code okay so this is how you can do some basic object oriented programming in groovy so now today we have learned some very basic concepts of groovy and how to use groovy step in soap ui uh, there is lot more to groovy and how exactly you can create an entire automation scripts and framework using groovy and soap ui that we are going to learn in the coming sessions so the idea of this session was to get you introduced to groovy scripting and programming in soap ui and if you have got the idea how do you use groovy that is enough and more than sufficient for this session in the coming sessions we will learn more about groovy programming language so in this session we learned what is groovy how to add groovy scripts in soap ui how to do some very basic coding and how to use classes and objects i hope this session was very useful for you i will meet you in the next session of soap ui thank you for watching